What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Swally Fins. Today, we're going to be talking about agar, but more specifically, how to use agar to grow mushrooms that you have gathered in the wild or bought from the grocery store. A few things that you will need. You need malt extract agar. Now, I purchased this from Amazon, but you can also buy from other online stores or retail stores. You need some Petri dishes. I also purchased this from Amazon. You need a glassware that you can use to mix and pressure cook your agar with. You need a teaspoon measuring cup or quarter teaspoon in this case. You need a syringe, 10 milliliter or bigger, smaller, just something to measure your water with. You need some rubbing alcohol to clean up your working surface and aluminum foil. Last but not least, you need your mushroom. I'm using this shiitake mushroom that I bought from the grocery store about a month back and now it's sliced up and all dried up. First thing you gotta do is to figure out how many petri dishes that you're trying to make. Today, I'm only gonna be making two dishes. Inside this jar, I have 60 milliliters of water and two quarter teaspoons of malt extract agar. I use 25 milliliter solution per petri dish. The reason why I fill this up with 60 milliliters of water instead of 50 is because sometimes as the jar cools down, the agar likes to stick to the bottom of the jar and gets really thick and doesn't want to come out. So I'd rather have too much than not enough. Wrap the top of the jar with your aluminum foil to prevent any kind of moisture from getting inside the jar while you pressure sterilize your solution. Stick this in your pressure cooker for 45 minutes at 15 PSI. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'll see you when it's done. All right guys. I'm back. So when you're done cooking your agar, make sure that you take it out when it's still pretty warm or at least kind of hot because it will start consolidating once it cools down. And uh, right here, I have my two agar dishes. When you open your bag of dishes, whatever you don't use, you want to keep it in the bag. So what I do is I keep it inside of my still air box and uh, I'll just keep this the original sleeve over the the dishes that I don't use. And when I'm ready to pour this, I'm gonna take this off, take take my aluminum foil off the top. You wanna keep trying to keep your hands away from going over the dish. And uh, take off that. Now do the bottom one, start on the bottom. You wanna stack them up, no more than five though. You, you stack them up and like this, and you uh, pour the bottom one first. That's half. Pour the top one. And uh, that's it for two agar dishes. So once you are done pouring the agar dish, what you want to do is take your container, put it on top of your last dish, and you stack them on top of each other. Why would you do that? It's because that container is going to keep the condensation from forming on top of your agar dish. When there is condensation on top of your agar dish, there is still water sometimes when you shake your dish, that condensation will fall off into your agar and that could cause contamination sometimes. All right guys, now you just gotta let it cool for a while and uh, I'll see you when it's cool. All right guys, I'm back after I sanitized my hands and wiped down my working area with some rubbing alcohol like this. Clean up my lighter that I'm using. Now next thing I gotta do is take a mushroom out or a piece of a mushroom. What you want to do is try and find one that's a little bit bigger and has a little bit more flesh on it. Just break it down this towel real quick. Okay. 
Now I'm going to be using my little handy dandy tool I got here. And flame sterilize it. Okay, now I get my agar ready. Make sure the top doesn't open up when you take off your little plastic sleeve. Now what you want to do is take your mushroom. And wipe it down real good. Just the outside of it. Okay, what I like to do is take this little piece of mushroom, I break it open on the fleshiest part. Now you don't need very much, you just need a little bit. Take my little tool, take out just a little piece of the flesh. See that? As you can see it on camera. And I do this real quick. I put it right in the inside of the agar, right in the middle. That's one. I take this dish, I put it aside, put the other one on top. Take my other half of the mushroom. I take another little piece from the inside. Of this. No, I don't know if you can see it. Just a tiny little piece. That's all you need. I'll put that on my agar. Boom. I'm done. I get my tape. Yeah, like my previous video, I said um, a lot of people like to use parafilm, but I just buy this cheap tape from the store. And um, it works pretty well. If you'd like to spend money on some parafilm, I'm sure it works better. But I haven't had any kind of real contaminant or contamination inside of my agar dishes. So I'm going to just use this. And once again, forgot something. Be right back. I'm back. So I take my pen or my marker. I mark down today's date and what kind of mushroom this is. All right, now I just gotta wait and um, see how she grows. All right, my mushroom people, now you learn how to use agar to turn a dry, sad, depressed piece of mushroom into a successful spawn. Whether you found it from the wild or you bought it at the grocery store and left it on the counter for too long and dried up, it's always good to add that extra species onto your collection. Don't forget, like, subscribe, 
and follow my Instagram for future content. Swally Fins, peace.